So you eventually transitioned uh, to not leading the sales training stuff, but you sort of moved into a role where I think you were leading like Yelp's expansion into national accounts. Can you talk a little bit about like why you made that switch? What is a national account? And I'm also curious, like, was it still the same sales motion? Were you still cold calling or was it more outside sales? How did what did national accounts look like at Yelp? Yeah, so it was I mean, it was another thing where I just look back on it like I was so thankful to have the opportunity to make that tr transition in my career, you know, much like doing the sales training thing where I learned a lot and I got to do some pretty cool work. Um, my boss was like, you know, hey, want to do this? We call it national, like mid, we had a mid-market team and it was basically everything other than this local SMB motion. And so we had a mid-market team, we had a national accounts team, which was selling to the Home Depots and the McDonald's of the world, State Farm. Um, and then we had a, actually ended up building a small channel team as well, selling to agencies who would then sell to SMBs. And we also built a really big franchise business, so selling to that, that model. And um, it was pretty interesting for me, like coming from the SMB local world and building that over whatever it was, eight years to then saying, okay, I'm going to take this team. And, and we only, I think we only had about 20 or 25 people on that team at the time on the national accounts team. So it was pretty small and we had, you know, it was a great business, but we hadn't really invested into it that much. And then I basically had this mission to grow that business from 20 to a hundred million dollars in a few years. And um, I was super optimistic about it. I was like, this is a great business. Um, this is the right time for this business. All these big brands are realizing they should be advertising on our platform. Um, and so I was super excited about it. We had this bench that we could hire the right people from the local org and bring them into mid-market and then bring them into national and franchise as well. And so it was like, not like starting over, but I mean, you know, going from managing a couple hundred people to a 20 person team and kind of figuring things out. We were still figuring out pricing and things like that, for example, for that business was just a great opportunity for me career wise. And so we did that. I worked with some incredible people. I got to work with some directors and VPs who really knew how to sell into those accounts. And I was able to learn from them. And meanwhile, kind of do everything that I knew how to do internally within the company because I had been there so long. So bringing in product, bringing in marketing and working cross-functionally to build the business is what my focus was. And um, it was great. I mean, the, the motion was interesting because we intentionally had full sales cycle AEs in that role. And if you think about it, like if you've got 20 accounts or 30 accounts and they're McDonald's, Home Depot, State Farm, do you really want an SDR like buzzing through that organization? No, like you want to be doing the outreach yourself. And that's how we had the national org set up. And um, that's how they were doing outreach. So it's primarily over email. And we had a really compelling message. It was, hey, your customers are talking about you on this platform. Your customers are searching for you on this platform. And so we were able to lead with a message around data that I think a VP of marketing or a CMO was actually pretty interested in. And then we were able to show them how we had like down funnel, like high intent traffic, much more higher intent than they could get anywhere else. And we could turn that on for them. So again, it, it wasn't easy. We kind of figured it out as we went, but the power of sort of almost like it being a freemium type business where they were already on the platform led the messaging. Similar with mid-market, although a little bit more difficult to get in touch with people. The franchise business was interesting because we kind of had a bottoms up motion with the local sales org, um, acquiring the individual locations. And then we could go in at a corporate level and set up an MSA um, and then sell into that MSA. So lots of different variations. And I ended up doing that for three or four years and building that business. And um, I'm really thankful to get that experience because it's really helped me in my career since then I can like go and build an enterprise team or whatever now, because of that. Um, so it was cool.
Yeah, no, that definitely reminds me more of, I guess, more traditional sales, like what we were doing at, you know, my last company, Lattice, of, you know, working with more of a corporate office and that mid-market enterprise deal. So that's amazing. I think what's so fun about this conversation is you went from, you know, a, you know, early sales employee to running a giant training program and national accounts. I mean, it must have been a crazy experience for you on a personal level, like, what was this like for you? I mean, how did you think about scaling yourself along this journey? And I don't know what, like from a mental perspective, like how did you kind of deal with so much change and so much personal growth in, in a pretty short period of time? Yeah, it was, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was a lot of work. <laughs> you know, I was working pretty hard. Um, I would say that I definitely realized a couple of years in that if I was going to do this long term, I could not be like working on the weekends or anything like I had to have that recharge time. And even after work, I remember, you know, I would take an Uber home from work and I would go into my settings on my iPhone and I would turn off my mail, like literally turn off my mail. So I couldn't even check it. Um, And then same thing on the weekends. And so I was pretty good about giving myself time to, you know, recharge and all that kind of stuff. And when you're managing an org that size, like if you have 365 people in your org or more, then at least once per day, it is someone in your org's worst day of the year. Like there's something happening in their life or in their work or whatever that's making it a really rough day for them. So the people management aspect of it was super important for my job and, of course, really stressful. The business stuff is is stressful always. But when you're dealing with that many people, you have to learn how to really care about people, work well with people, not let their stress become your stress. And those were all things I just had to figure out over time. Uh, And unplugging on the weekends after work was an important part of that. Um, But, you know, I really liked what I did uh, in that at that company and during that time. And I think ultimately the fact that I kind of had these refreshes every two or three years is what kept me excited, like going from IC to manager to director of sales training, moving back to San Francisco and running that office and then doing the national accounts thing. Every two or three years, I was able to sort of almost like start with almost like a fresh project within the company. And without that, I don't know if I would have been able to keep it going for 11 years. Um, So that was pretty important. And then the people were great. Like I didn't I didn't mind spending time with everyone and seeing everyone on Monday morning when we had our Monday morning meeting. Um, And so that helped too. 